In this video of Azure Data Factory Data Flow, I'm going to talk to you about schema drift. The schema drift we're referring to is when your source data changes columns, and those columns change names or they're moved around within your source data. This is very common in ETL scenarios and data integration scenarios. And tools need a way to be able to handle those sort of changes so they don't break. We don't want our ETL uh, pipelines and our data flows to be very brittle. We want them to be resilient to change. Otherwise, you have to go in and redesign, redevelop, and republish and rebuild your uh, pipelines, your data flows very often. So with ADF data flow, we've thought about this and we call that schema drift. So a very simple data flow already built for you on the screen. And then what I'm looking at are two different files. Let's look at the first example of my sales files. So this is a CSV file with just three columns. This is just an illustrative demo. Uh, I have an ID for a book. I have a title of the book and then I have a cost for that book. Now, some days I'll receive that file, but other days I'll receive similar information, but some of the, the columns may be a little bit different and maybe worded differently. So in, here in this case, I have a file that has pretty much the same data, but a little bit different. I have the ID, the published date is included now. The title instead of cost is called cost of goods sold or COGS is a column within there. So I need to be able to account for that as well. I want to just build one data flow that I can execute and um, run my ETL job every day without needing to rewrite for these two different scenarios. Okay, so let's go over back to that data flow. Now in my source, I'm defining one single data set that will point to whatever file happens to land in that folder. And I have schema drift turned on. You'll see in my data set that I'd have no schema defined. So when you want to work with pure data from a schema perspective, from a uh, schema drift perspective, when you work when you work with that schema without needing to define and work with that metadata within that because it could change, you want to use these options. So we're going to turn on schema drift. I'm not going to worry at all about the schema. So and no schema defined at all. Now let's take a look at that data here from a preview perspective. So I have my debug turned on on my data flow. So I'm connected up live to my Databricks cluster. And you can see that there are the three columns and there is the data from my spreadsheet, from my CSV that is now in my, um, in my data flow. So now how do you then continue to um, write an ETL and how do you transform data when you um, are worried about or have to handle changing columns scenarios or changing data scenarios? So in that case, what you do is you write um, your transforms this way. So now I have a derived column as my next transform. What I want to do is I want to add the sales tax to that uh, cost column because I don't have the sales tax account for my sales data. So instead of writing a typical uh, transform column within derived column here in data flow, I'm going to select add column pattern. When I do that, the first thing that I have to do within data flow is I have to identify either the name or the type, so data type or name from the incoming data so that ADF can identify which columns it is that you want to transform. So in this case, I know that I have two different columns that I can receive the same data in either COGS or cost. So either one of those matches. Now I'm accounting for the different changing columns. There's many different ways that you could form this as well. You could use a regular expression here. You could look for portions of a name. You could even use type um, for your matching mechanism. When any column comes in and matches this condition, it will then um, fill in with the value, the special value in, in data flow expressions of dollar dollar. So I'm going to append the text underscore with underscore tax to any incoming column that matches cogs or cost. So we'll end up with these columns that are called cost underscore with tax and cogs underscore with tax. And then the um, the calculation I'm going to perform on it is my adding the tax to it. So I'm going to um, change the incoming um, data type to a, a double to know that it has a dollar sign in front of it within my source files, but it has decimals, so I'm, that's good, but I don't want the dollar sign there, so that's going to throw off my um, my data type conversion. So I'm going to trim off the dollar sign in there. And then once I do, I'm going to multiply by 1.09. So I'm adding 9% tax to my uh, cost, and then I'm going to round that to two digits. So that's my calculation. Now when I look at uh, that data from a preview perspective, you can see that it has indeed ADF data flow has matched cost and COGS. In this case, it matched cost, and it has multiplied that by 1.09 to add the, the tax and create a new column, which is cost underscore with tax for me. So this way now my data flow will not break and will continue to work as I expected 
depending on whether or not that um, column changes. So if I had just only looked for the column of cost, it wouldn't work when that column changes to the word to the term cogs. Now, let, one last thing I just want to do here is I want to whatever um, columns get trapped within that um, that pattern match is I want to clean that up a little bit. So that's okay for a a double, but it doesn't look um, like a currency like I want it to. So I'm going to apply some formatting to that. So on my next clean total transform, I'm adding a dollar sign and I'm adding some padding with the zeros onto that. So there's many different ways to, to create a calculation expression like that. The way that I do it in here is I'm just doing the uh, left by padding zeros all the way at the right, changing that to a string, and adding the dollar sign, and I'm looking for where the decimal is. So this way, when I say, once I locate the decimal, Give me the next couple of spaces after that, and then give me the left to the very end. So that is how I format that nicely, and then I sync. So when I sync, I'm just going to auto map because again, I don't know what the fields are going to say, so I don't want to physically map um, columns. Now this works fine when I have the file of cost in there. Let's um, uh, everything. So every, everything in my data flow and pipeline can stay exactly the same. Let's now swap out <laughs> that file of that sales file from sales to that other version, uh, which has cogs in it. And that I have is labeled as uh, sales2.csv. So what I'll do is I have that here in my sample data. I have it called as schema drift um, two. So we'll copy that. Go back to sample data. We'll take away the current sales uh, CSV and replace it with the one that's gonna come in in this case, this new one that's going to come in is going to have a uh, cogs for that cost, which is going to be a little bit different. And you'll see that everything is going to work just fine in my data flow. Go from my source, I'll go over to my first derived column, and you'll see that indeed cogs is coming in. There's my published date, but everything works just fine. Uh, that my matching pattern has caught cogs as well and added the width text to it, give me the same calculation, because my next derived column simply looks for any column that has with tax in it that should work just fine as well and indeed there we go so I match that so that's how you can do uh, pattern matching and schema drift um, by ha setting that on the on your source then your transformations you use the pattern matching and then the sync you do an auto map and that way uh, as things change your um, data flow just fine thanks for watching